Okay, one of the final steps now. We are going to glue our switch down after soldering it. Now, an on-off switch acts basically like having a piece of wire with a break in it and then connecting the wire back together again. Off, on, off, on. There is nothing digital or electronic uh, specifically about the switch. It's, it's purely mechanical. So, all it does is interrupt a wire. So we're going to make a break in our red wire, our positive wire. In, in, a, in the simple case, it doesn't really make a difference which wire you choose, whether it's the black wire, the ground, or the, or the positive wire, the red one. But as a good convention, you should probably stick to the red one. So we're going to mount our switch right up here so that while we're riding, it's easy for us to access. And we're going to have the red wire come up and connect to one end and then continue on by coming out the other end of the switch. Our black wire is also probably a little bit too long now unless we lengthen the red wire somehow. So we're going to do that. So the first length of red wire just needs to reach up the switch. So just that long. And a bit of solder. And then we'll need a length of red wire to run from the front of the switch to, con to connect back up with our red wire back here that we had earlier cut. One more piece of heat shrink. Where, where our two wires will join. Solder one end of the wire onto our switch. Twist our wires together. Glue the heat shrink down. Alright, so now we have our wires attached to our switch. We just need to glue the switch down. So we'll put glue liberally on the back of the switch and 
glue it down to the top of the light. Once we're happy with its position, then we will apply glue over the exposed metal connectors so that we can't we can't short them. Apply glue all the way around the switch, including along its seams, so that it's better attached to the housing, light housing, and waterproofed. Then we also apply a small amount of glue around the lip of our silicone button. You don't want to put on too much glue here because you don't want it to ooze into the inside and interfere, interfere with the actual button. So we'll carefully place that on top. And then we again apply glue over the top of the lip, making sure that the glue that we're applying connects with the glue that's already on the body of the switch, so that it's holding on to something. Make sure we haven't missed anything and wait for it to dry. Once the glue has dried, test it out once more. If you have pressed this button, it switches modes. So that's low mode, blinking mode, and high mode. It works. So final step, we're going to seal off a bunch of these holes in the back, not the screw holes in case we need to access it again to do repairs. just the wire holes to prevent any water from getting inside, as well as to provide, again, more strain relief so that when you're yanking on these wires, you're not yanking them off of your solder points on the inside. Finally, depending on how you mount, where you mount this light on your bike, you might find that the holes in these fins allow light to come back and get into your eyes and ruin your night vision. What you can do to deal with that is take a little bit of tape. I have foil tape here because it's very opaque and it also blends in nicely, and just tape over the back of the fins. This does reduce airflow, but you, you have plenty when you're riding your bicycle, and not being blinded by your own light is always useful. So the fins aren't actually symmetrical, which is why I'm not putting the tape dead center. This foil tape also is very resistant to water and the elements, so it will last 
Mm, probably as long as your light, which hopefully will be a very long time. And that's it. You can build yourself an extension cord now if you want. Um, but you are ready to mount your light on your bike.